One thing, if you're a criminal you don't want to do, you don't want to rob Craig. Let's find out why. Good afternoon and welcome to Lawyer It Up. I'm your host, Patrick McGeehan. I'm a Florida trial attorney and former police officer, and I provide you news and information on the Second Amendment, uh, guns industry from around Florida and around the nation. And today we're talking robbery. Occurring in Norco, California, Sunday, July 30th, four armed robbers wanted to rob Craig, and here they are at the Norco market. They pull up in a stolen SUV, all donning hoodies, and they got their long guns. And the Norco market is in Riverside County. It's right here it's near Center Avenue and 6th Street. And one thing I always do, I always like to take a look at the location, see what it looks like. Looks like a pretty typical California location. Another thing I always do is I look at violent crime stats. And you can see here, this is a violent crime stat for crime stat map for Norco, California. The redder a square is, the more crime there is. The robbery took place right here in this greenish yellow area. So it's not a high crime area, but it's not a low crime area either. This is I-15, so it's one, two, three, four, maybe four and a half, five blocks off the interstate, which is a pretty good location. Robbers look for that. So what happens in this particular case? Well, these guys pull up on the side of the building. It looks like they pulled up right here by where this handicap sign was. And there's cameras all out here and all in the front as well as the inside. And the store owner, Craig, is inside. He's an 80-year-old man. He sees them coming in. And here they are right here. Let's go back to the beginning. He sees them pulling up, coming in with the long guns, four of them. The first one breaches the door with an AR-15, of course illegal in California, because it's got the 30 round magazine, the forward, pistol, the forward uh, grip, and an optic, all illegal in California. This goes to show criminals do not obey gun laws. Well, Craig sees him coming in, there's a buzzer on the door, and I guess he buzzes them in. Craig's standing back here in the corner, and he just lets loose with a shotgun blast to this guy, there you go. There's a shotgun blast. They go running out the door. Outside, capture the Get back in the car. Screaming. We'll pause it here for the comments. You can see here, here's our one with the orange slash on him. He is the one that got his arm shot off. He runs, hurry, gets in the back seat, screaming the whole way. They almost forget their buddy, which they typically do. Sometimes they drive off without him. They get in the car and subsequently take off. They find these guys later at the hospital. They find the one with the gunshot wound, three others arrested. There are ones from Las Vegas, ones from Inglewood, and two of them are from Los Angeles. They arrest them. They're going to arrest the one who's injured when he gets out of jail. A couple of days ago, I think I saw it right after it happened. I guess it was yesterday. Um, somebody asked me, don't you have to tell them to drop the gun beforehand? And the answer to that is no. I mean, if you have the opportunity to, but don't don't take unnecessary chances thinking that you're required to uh, issue that type of warning or that type of challenge to them. You know, you look at the circumstances, it's always the totality of the circumstances when you're looking at self-defense. When you look at self-defense law, the force you're able to use and the force you're authorized to use in self-defense is that force which is reasonable and necessary to deter or stop an imminent threat of death or great bodily harm. So let's talk about that a little bit more. The store owner is in the store. He's watching this go down on the video camera outside. He sees these four guys get out with long guns. So there's four robbers against one. The victim's 80 years old. They're coming through the door with the guns pointed. So the threat of imminent death or great bodily harm is absolutely there. You do not have to issue a warning under those circumstances. He did the absolute right thing by busting loose and lighting this guy up, which caused all of them to get back in their car and flee. But it, you, you got to be careful. I mean, if these guys come in the door and they decide they change their mind or whatever, and they run back out before anything happens and you fire a shot at them while they're running out and hit one of them, you could have a problem. But under the circumstances here, Craig should be good to go because even in California where all guns are illegal and nobody owns them except the criminals, 
you still have a right of self-defense. And it looks like Craig is in the right here, uh, pretty much 100%. Uh, you know, these guys have a dangerous job. Convenience store clerk is one of the most dangerous jobs in the country. It's a Sunday night at almost 3 a.m. That's when these guys like to strike. You know, early morning hours, close to the interstate, getaway route, stolen car, car full of guns. I don't know where the guns came from, but, you know, I don't know where they were stolen, whether it was stolen from a gun shop or from some private citizen. So just keep in mind, you know, when you're when you're dealing with self-defense, you can use that force, which is reasonable and necessary to defend yourself against imminent, and I stress imminent, great bodily harm or death. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time on Lawyered Up.